Hi, on this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to set up a simple HTTP web server on the ASP32 using the PicoWeb uh, micro framework. So, as I've said, PicoWeb is a micro framework that will allow us to um, deploy a simple HTTP web server in a style like uh, Bottle uh, or Flask, which are two, two very popular frameworks for uh, Python. Uh, of course, that those frameworks I've mentioned are, are uh, uh, very big, the, their code is uh, much more complex and uh, it was not feasible to use them on uh, microcontrollers such as the SP32. So PicoWeb is a much simpler and lighter version of uh, an HTTP web server. Uh, nonetheless, it offers us a lot of flexibility and there are lots of things we can do with it. Um, at the time I'm uh, recording this, I did not find uh, an official support um, version for the ASP32. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I wasn't also able to to install it using MicroPip, uh, the MicroPython package manager. So I found kind of a workaround to manually install it and resolve all the dependencies uh, to be able to run it on the SP32. I'm not going to explain how to do it here. It's not an uh, an hard process. It's just it's just boring. And uh, in my in my um, blog I have a written post, a step-by-step -step post on how to do it. I will leave the link in the, the description and you can follow it uh, if you want. Uh, but it was the easiest way I found to install it. If you have uh, a better way of doing please let me know. Uh, it would be very useful. So another important thing to say is that for us to complete this tutorial uh, Netro you need to, to be connected to a Wi-Fi network. So our ASP needs to be connected uh, for the PicoWeb app to be able to receive HTTP requests that we are going to be doing. In this case, they are going to be very simple and we are going to be doing it uh, them uh, using a um, web browser. So as you can see here, I'm already connected. Uh, I run a script that automates my connection to the, to the um, Wi-Fi network. Uh, I will leave also a link uh, in the description for um, on how to connect to, to Wi-Fi network if you haven't already done it. Uh, note that one important aspect is that we're going to need this IP, uh, which is the IP address that is assigned to us, uh, to our device when it connects to the, the, to the Wi-Fi network, and we are going to, to pass it to one of the Pico Web functions uh, to tell the, the app where, uh, what is the IP where, uh, where it will be listening. Uh, note also that uh, this IP is local, um, so you are only going to, to be able to contact the PicoWeb app uh, in your local network, meaning that the machine where your web browser will be running needs to be on the same network, uh, Wi-Fi network of the ASP32, otherwise you will not be able to, to reach it, for example from uh, um, your friend's house or something else. Unless you do port forwarding on your router, uh, but port forwarding is kind of a more advanced procedure. It depends on the type of routers and it may expose you to some security threats. So uh, um, for playing uh, or for initial tests, this is the safest way by far, keeping everything on your local network. Uh, so enough with uh, this introductory talk. Uh, we are going to, to start with the code, as you can see here. Uh, this will be a script on UPyCraft, the MicroPython IDA. I'll leave a link if you if you don't know about it, you can you can uh, read more about it. It's it's very useful for uploading this kind of scripts because the big scripts are not uh, uh, easy to to or it's not practical to do them in the common way. So we first start by importing the PicoWeb module we have uh, installed previously. Um, and then we need to create an instance of, uh, of the uh, web app class. Uh, this is basically the class that will expose us, uh, most of the functionality for us to set up our roots. Think of the roots, uh, as we'll see below, as the skeleton of our application. But uh, basically we'll create an instance of this class and it's received as input a name, a name from our, for our app. You can name it whatever you like. I'm naming it my app. And as we'll store here uh, the variable um, of, uh, of our app. 
Uh, then, as I was saying, um, the way PicoWeb works uh, is by specifying routes. What is a route? Basically, a route, uh, as you can see here, uh, is the endpoint where, when some some client does an HTTP request to that endpoint, uh, it will trigger this route. For example, let me put here something. Uh, it will trigger if I if I do a request on the on our server on the slash something route, it will trigger the execution of this index function that uh, will do whatever we specify, and uh, supposedly it will return an answer to our client. Uh, but just to 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 explain, uh, this is a decorator in Python. It's what is called a decorator. I'm not going to explain what uh, decorator is, but there are lots of resources around the web that explain it. Although uh, you you don't need to 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 understand what a decorator is, basically you just need to call this. I think of it as a function uh, on the app object. Below, uh, we need to to define a function. As I've said, that will be triggered on an HTTP request received here, and this function will receive two parameters. Note that these parameters will be passed by the by the framework, and we will not need to worry about them about uh, uh, being ourselves passing these parameters. The framework handles them for for us. So this first one is of a class HTTP request, and we will not explore it here. We will leave it for for other tutorials. The second one, uh, I've called it the resp. Uh, this is aligned with uh, the, the names that the uh, author of the library uh, gives on the original tutorial. I will also leave a link here for the original tutorial, uh, hello or tutorial from the library. But this, uh, this RESP object is basically a stream writer, a uh, Python stream writer, that allows us to uh, write content to a socket uh, that will be sent, the content will be sent to the client that is contacting us. So it's a little bit lower level that, than, for example, flask or bottle, but also gives us a little bit more of control. So, as um, now entering in the in the actual function, what we are going to to do is basically respond to our client. So PicoWeb, the PicoWeb module, uh, as we can see here that I've imported before, uh, exposes a function called start response. That basically, if you look to the inside of this function, what it uh, does is starting to write the, the first part of the HTTP protocol, like HTTP, uh, version of HTTP, content type, etc. Uh, for now, we'll just use the defaults, and this uh, uh, because this receives more parameters, but we'll tackle that in uh, future videos. Uh, but it receives the, the previously mentioned stream writer uh, object because it will need to send some content to the client. This yield from a keyword here and here we will not worry about them, we will just use them because this is related to the synchronous behavior of the framework and it's something a little bit more complex and we are not going to tackle it here like we did not tackle the, the, roots, uh, the root stuff. So, but you can read more about it, but um, just as an information, this is related to, to synchronous behavior but we should use them for everything to work okay. So, uh, we finished the, the initialization, basically, so this is an utility function from the Pico web, uh, and then we want to, to send the actual content to the client, so we grab our, our stream writer object, and we simply call the A from asynchronous, this A is from asynchronous, the A write um, method of, the, of that object, and uh, pass it the content we want to send to the client. In this case, it just, it's just a simple hello world message uh, and this will be sent to the client the same way that the previously HTTP header beginning was sent with the previous function call. So, this is it, our route is finished, uh, our route, sorry. Uh, and this, uh, for, for simple, simple stuff, it is as simple as this. Uh, in this case, I'm sending an LO message. I could have been sending HTML, JSON, etc. Whatever suits your application. To finalize and uh, make our application actually run, we go back to our app object. <coughs> Sorry. 
and called the the run method. Basically, this run method is what will start start uh, the listening the the listening of the app to the the incoming HTTP requests. This first parameter called debug, we set it to true. So uh, upon running, this app uh, prints some additional information. And this host was the one I was talking about before, and this is where we specified the, um, basically the IP address where our app will be listening, and it was the local IP that was assigned to us when connecting to the Wi-Fi network. And basically, the code is finished. I'm going to upload it with UPyCraft. Very simple, as you can see. It kind of it it starts running the the it starts running the the um, the the script but sometimes it messes some of the the prints but basically the output of this uh, I'm sorry this is kind of messed up the output of this script is the the message I'm trying to select okay these messages this me message is from the 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 Pico Web framework and indicates that the server is running uh, on uh, on a given uh, IP, the IP we we gave it, and on the 8081 port, this is the default port where the the Pico Web will listen. But in the run method, we can specify another port if you want. I'm going to copy this. So in UPyCraft, uh, you need to right click to copy stuff from the command line. Otherwise, if you do a Control C, you will stop the the script, and that's not what we want. So I'm going to copy. I'm going to go here to a, to a browser, I'm just leaving the HTTP part and thus I'm going to, to access the, the route we specified note that it's the same uh, uh, sorry, this, this route is, is something, the, the route something was the one we specified so, note that this only indicates, that, that message only indicates the, the IP and the, and the and the port where the the, um, the app is listening, it doesn't indicate a route because we can have multiple routes, and we define something as our route. It could be something else. And here we go. If we access this, uh, if we access this endpoint, we get an hello world message, a uh, message as we defined in our code. So this is it. A very minimalist but uh, useful HTTP uh, framework. So, hope you have enjoyed this, I'll be doing some more videos on PicoWeb, and uh, thanks for watching.